One of our viewers who says, I'm a teacher in Uniondale. We know the colors, the hand signals, and the letters and numbers that are attached to each gang. The majority of the kids in my school are terrified ever since that child was shot in Uniondale. They're afraid to walk home from school. Teachers, parents, and administrators must work together to quell this problem. And they have to do that because what's happening in Uniondale is the power is moving to the gangs. Yeah. And that's what the kids you know, are sensing. Right, Sergio, that's what the gangs want. They want the fear. Yeah, they well, want you, fear, yeah. sure. But you know, a lot of these kids, I don't even think they realize the kind of, you know, I, I think the media hypes it more than it actually is. A lot of these youngsters go on their daily business. They're dealing with this stuff on a daily basis, and many of them have grown accustomed to it. So it's about us growing as a, as a community and trying to give them techniques and ways of starting to reduce. We have to empower our youngsters That's and sure. the community as well. Okay, we're going to go to uh, one of our Long Island communities. That is Roosevelt. That's where News 12 Dana Lowy is. She's at the Roosevelt Public Library. Dana, back to you. Hey there, Lee. Well, we're having a very lively conversation here about what do you do if you have somebody that wants to get out of a gang? Because I know you guys were talking about it and everybody here is talking about it. Valerie, you work in a group that helps kids. What do they do? You said relocate them, but who's got the money for that? You're going to have to have agencies such as the Youth Board, Family and Children's Association. OGA will come together to do some work with the young person and their family and look at the situation, make an assessment, and see what is in the best interest of that young person. But it's not going to be easy. We need to get more resources to be able to help the young people to move forward and it is possible and it's not about cash money and cars as to why they're joining there are other reasons lack of parents parents incarcerated no activities there are many reasons and it's not related okay. to cash money and cars all right well real quick because I know that Marty has been waiting the whole time to speak you have a great conference in Hofstra you want to tell everybody right about. School of Education Allied Human Services is sponsoring its third conference this year on violence prevention, gang prevention, uh, intervention to support the communities in Nassau and Suffolk County. And to come up with solutions. We've heard about parents Absolutely. here. We've heard very, about... Very, important. It's a bi-county right. Thank you effort. very much. Thank you very much. Lee, we had to give Marty Bloom a chance to talk about that Absolutely. great conference. Third year in the row. Yes. Now back to you. It's important, and I know we're running out of time. Dana, thank you very much. We're going to go to Mike from Glen Cove now. Mike, thanks for joining us. You have a question? Yes, thanks for having me on. Uh, my question is, what are the legislators and... Uh, and our judicial branch is prepared to do to offer a deterrence to these kids to making choices to join gangs and those that are in gangs to just get out of them and to hold the parents accountable. I hear a lot of uh, initiatives towards uh, offering kids alternatives. Are we hoping to just starve the recruitment of the current gangs until they just walk away because they can't get any new members? All right, Where's Mike. the deterrence? Okay, Mike, uh, I'll give that to you, Kavan. Well, I mean, there's, there's laws on the books already to, I mean, basically, if a gang member has a gun or right, a gang member right. sells drugs, there's right. laws on the books right. already to to prosecute that person so in terms of from a county legislative standpoint um, there's not that much more you can do in terms of you know making the laws more cumbersome I think what the what the uh, caller may have been also talking about is possibly I guess uh, arresting or prosecuting people based off of them being gang members and I'm a little bit leery about that because a lot of our young people they, they they're fascinated with with the rap style yeah, with right. with music yeah and basically I don't want to start arresting young people <laughs> because you think they're in a gang so you got to be very careful with that, but I think from the standpoint, if a young person, if they're in a gang, they, they use, they uh, uh, they sell drugs or they sell guns, they should be prosecuted. All right, I want to go to Nakia from Roosevelt, who's joining us, and I know Nakia has a story to tell us. Nakia, thanks for joining us. Hi, um, I just was calling because um, it's almost two years since I lost my brother, mm -hmm. um, since he's been gone, and um, it seemed like since he's left, since he's got killed in 2002, the gang violence has basically grown more than lessened. And it's just hurting me so bad to see that these kids are still, you know, getting into these gangs. And I would feel like I don't, I don't want to use my brother's, I would like to say that as far as with my brother's passing, I would think that that would be an example for these kids to really, like, stay away from stuff like that and more, then more get into it. And if anything, it seems like there's more getting into it than not, you know, than, than getting away from it. And it's so sad that it takes that for somebody to die for the community to finally get together and finally come together and, and, and basically, I mean, you know, try to get this stuff, like, I guess, out of the neighborhoods because it's ruining everyone's lives. It's ruining my life. Two years after the fact, I'm still hurt of it. And every time I see the news, I'm always seeing kids dying over gang violence or just crazy just stuff that's just going on in the neighborhoods. 
And I would just like to definitely just see it stop because every day I'm grieving still over my brother, and I'm grieving every day when I hear things about other people and their families and their kids getting shot or killed. And I just like for people to just really just be more educated about it than being dumbfounded about it. All right, Nakia, thank you very much for sharing that story. I mean, that's part of what we're trying to do here. I mean, talking about it, educating <coughs> people about it, hopefully will help people realize we've got to do something. And empower it's, it's, the it's people. That's the key. It's extremely important that, uh, you know, we need not reinvent the wheel. We can look at the gang laws in Chicago and California, the gang capitals of this country, and gang laws have not worked or been effective. Parents have been getting locked up in Texas. Has that decreased gang activity in Texas? No. Proposition 21 in California, kids, juveniles, serving time with grown adults. Has that decreased gang activity in California? Absolutely not. We have legis um, Chuck Schumer, who just announced $463 million legislation, $40 million of that nationwide for prevention and intervention, based out to $800,000 per state. It's not real. All right, Sergio, I'm going to cut you off there because we're running out of time, and I want to get one more caller in before we go back to you guys, and that's David from Uniondale on the line. David, do you have a question for us? Yes, uh, I actually have a, a comment and suggestion. Okay. Um, no disrespect intended to anyone on the uh, panel. Uh, with the exception of the gentleman from Strong, I just see a bunch of politics up there right now. I've heard in the beginning of the program that uh, from Mr. Quinn that there's no growth problem. I heard from the other gentlemen say there's no growth problem, we're just detecting more, and I, I don't think that could be further from the truth. Five years ago, I'm in Uniondale 20 years now, and five years ago, it wasn't like this. And if you listen to the community, then you'd know that the problems that we're having now are way bigger than what we had even five years ago. All right, David, your suggestion? The problem, my suggestion is the problems start in the home, the parents are failing their children, uh, the schools are failing. Implementing uniform policies and banning bandanas doesn't solve the problem but hides it. If it takes a village to raise a hmm. child, then it certainly takes a village to fail one. All right. We are certainly uh, hearing what you say. We're running out of time, and I want to go down the panel. And, and just tell us, you know, Kev Kevon, what do we have to do? Well, number one, I mean, I, I mean, what the caller had said basically is, 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 is true to some extent <coughs> in regards to um, more programs and more parenting that needs to be, be be part of the process. The bottom line is that, I mean, everyone has to begin to start to network, and I think we've been trying to do that in Nassau County, community-based organizations, parents, uh, families, of course, and within that process, educators, law enforcement, government officials, there needs to be a network in the process before we get move forward on this problem. Sergio, what do we have to do? Uh, our young people need to know that uh, there, there are resources out there available to them, and we have to provide those resources. And as a community, we have to come together and address the issue. Strong is sponsoring its fourth annual Peace March on Sunday, October 10th, and it's dedicated to all of the young lives we've lost to gang violence. If you care about your community, come out and support us. Right, Jim, what do we have to do? Well, I think my perspective might be different from some of the other panelists. I think as far as the district attorney is concerned, we need to continue to proactively prosecute these cases. We flag them when they come into the system, as I said earlier. Um, we allocate more resources to them. And I think if you talk to defense attorneys out in Suffolk County, they know now their clients, if they are gang members, are treated differently. I think the gang members now know that. And I think that's having a positive effect. Greg, what do we need to do? Well, we need, it's a multifaceted approach that we need to do. We need the parents and Involvement. We did schools involvement. We did the church involvement. Uh, we need some legislation for, uh, I disagree with Sergio, about the step enhancement is similar to California, that if you are committing violent acts, we need some step enhancement for if it's committed in the course of a gang or for the gang, that they get additional time. And we need our state legislators to do that. All right. Paul, as I'm sure you would agree, community involvement. I would involvement. agree with that. But I would say we have to start focusing on individual communities, like the caller said, and coordinate within communities. And I don't think we're doing that enough. All right. Lots of information. Thank you, everybody. A lot of what we talked about is on our website, news12.com. We will have numbers and, and web addresses for you there. I want to thank all my guests and thank all of you who watched and shared your questions and opinions with us tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lee Tyrell.